Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to On the Couch with myself, Martin Colcliffe. Today, my guest comes all the way from Malta. Uh, she has become a friend of mine. We met at the Arthur Finlay College, where I did sittings for her and took a photograph of her mother, who's in the spirit world. And if you're lucky, she might just show us that later on. So my guest today is Penny Dix. Good afternoon, Penny. Hi, Martin. And thank you so much for inviting me to do this with you today. Um, I'm a little nervous, but actually really looking forward to it. Well, I'm, I'm sure you'll be fine. I mean, what made me want to get you on was when you said of all the different interests that you'd got, which I don't want to bring up at the moment. I'd like you to bring them in in the interview. The first thing I'd like to talk about, when you emailed me and we were discussing the interview, you talked about the unusual route that you've taken in your development. So I'd like to start there if we can. Yeah, sure. Well, I think for me, um, I think I've been a, a natural medium all my life, but didn't actually realize it. Um, so that I didn't actually really understand what mediumship particularly was about. I think for me, what's happened is when I've, I've noticed I'm a kind of like, when someone just passes, they seem to come to me. So the decisions yeah. come to me, which, uh, I know is not often perhaps the norm because often I know mediums have said that spirit don't tend to connect via a medium for quite a while after their passing. But for me, I often have really very quick interaction with spirit um, soon after their passing. And I, I then feel quite compelled or have done over the years to, if it feels right, to actually let the person that they've left behind know that I've had this experience. Yes. It's, it's strange that when people say that because the night my father died, instantly hearing voices, giving me precise instructions on what to do. And uh, he died on the 4th of January. And by the 12th, he'd communicated to me. You know, through a medium, obviously, I've been to see a medium and I went to a spiritualist church and my cousin was the same. My cousin passed. And by this time I was a medium and my cousin was instantly speaking to me. So I had a similar experience, actually. Yeah. And uh, I, I found that usually I'm quite good at sensing whether the person who has been left behind is in the right place to receive the information. Yes, yes. So I tread carefully because I know it's it's a very sensitive area and also so soon perhaps after somebody has passed. And so far I think I probably haven't made any um, huge mistakes in communicating the information. And it has given uh, the sort of the people that, that, that I've done this for a lot of comfort. So that now I find I get quite a, a certain people in my circle know that I seem to be able to do this. And so they will perhaps let me know if strange things happen after the passing of their loved one. And, you know, I can just say the things that will help them understand that actually what they're experiencing is quite normal. Yes. Yeah. And I think you're showing the responsibility there. Not everybody uh, believes in what we do and I, I think sometimes if you force it on people you could perhaps end up in trouble you never know you could just end up in trouble but um, there's been some research done uh, by Professor Rose team at Northampton University and the lady that did the research showed that by visiting a medium it can help in the healing process whether it be six weeks six months or six years i think the trial periods were and they found it people bereaved at those different time scales all received some form of help with those at six weeks getting the most benefit out of it so that's interesting yeah and it's interesting because i've had a lady quite recently who actually doesn't know that i have um any interest if you like in spirit or, or working with with spirit but she does know that I'm a counsellor and therapist and yeah. and so she messaged me and said because she'd recently lost her husband that something very strange had happened and 
was she going mad and could she just check it by me and you know and hope that I wouldn't think that she was completely you know silly so she told me what had been happening and this was that uh, she'd been particularly worried about something connected with her husband's passing and sorting out finance and things like that and she didn't know how to work the computer but it suddenly sprang to life in the mid you know sort of like in the early hours of the morning and she was sitting there and it woke her up and it came up on the page that she needed to address this particular transaction and she just said is that you and just felt that she was either going very mad or that her husband was there and it's and so i reassured her and i said look i said spirit often will use uh, the electrical kind of system yes. to make their point or make us aware that they're present. Um, whether you might be able to answer this better than me, but whether it's to do with the sort of vibrational energies that they operate on, and maybe does that affect, um, can it affect electricity? I think it can, yes, because um, a few years ago, I said somebody staying with us, and a photograph of a grandfather fell face down and the we got the stereo on in the front room and the stereo turned itself up there, there was it was an old stereo there was no remote to it and the stereo just turned itself up so i do i do know that they can mess with the electricity yeah my father did that um after he passed he kept turning on the television in the middle of the night which was quite <laughs> quite funny really we, we we got to quite like it my mother and I yeah, um, but I assured this lady that it was okay what was happening and for me I just felt terribly thrilled for her and in fact since then she's messaged me several times and said it's been happening again and it keeps happening and she now just talks to him and I said that's what you have to do and I said if you listen I said whatever you hear coming back in his voice in your head that's him answering you yes and yeah. oh my god you mean it's that easy i said yes <laughs> yeah it's true we shouldn't complicate things oh. I, I remember going to my, one of my first spiritualist churches and there was two circles on the same night and there was the the development group which i was in and then it was quite an advanced circle that used to sit in this back room some lovely old ladies that were in that circle and one day I can remember one girl called Millie. She was a lovely lady. I think she's passed away now. But she came and she went to grab a coat and it was tied to the chair. And I can't remember her husband's name. It's over 20 years ago. But she says, like, oh, George, don't do that. And I said, it must be lovely when you do that. She says, it is, but I miss him in the physical. And, you know, that's the sad thing. We yeah. can link loved ones together with our mediumship, but we can't give them that physical presence, that you know the the touch of love they can give us the feeling of love but not that touch of love yeah um and, and i think also what's really interesting is that certainly i've discovered when i lost my mother um i actually almost have a better and stronger and more loving relationship with her now since she passed and i feel so immersed in her love for me that it's just it's almost quite overwhelming this wonderful it was like she gave me the gift of freedom when she passed because I was her full-time carer for 16 years um, and I know that there was a part of her that probably chose to stay longer than perhaps she wanted to because she didn't want to leave me and she knew I was worried about being left without her yes. so that for me is incredibly comforting because i just talk to her all the time yes so a lot of the mediums that i've spoke to and i'm going to interview uh, have been platform mediums and do you work on the platform or do you I'll, I'll make another quite, line of work with mediumship i'll be quite honest with you martin platform work terrifies me <laughs> i've not done it um, I don't see there'd be a time when I would do it, but I do see a time when I would do trance work um, as part of a group or even on the platform. That seems to have come far more naturally for me. 
It's not that I can't, or well, that sounds silly, can't do it. I, I'm aware that I can work as a medium, but I think when I'm, I think if I'm trying to do something like platform work, it's like I get in my way. Yes, yeah. I'm not so good at getting out of my way. I'm not to say that that won't come maybe later on, um, but at the moment, that's why I think with trance work, and certainly when I did your course at, at Arthur Finlay, um, I learned so much that week about trance, and it gave me the confidence to recognise that what I thought I'd actually been doing and working with trance was actually on the right sort of path, yes. and that actually... All I have to do is choose to develop it further when I wish to at the right time. In a way, that's it's, it's pleased me that you've said that, that I picked somebody who isn't a platform medium because uh, there's lots of people that I've met since being, uh, you know, had the medium ability and being a teacher. They say, oh, I don't want to go on the platform. And when I first, I couldn't understand them not wanting to do it because I'd always been a, a public figure. I'd been the drum major of the Staffordshire Regiment. I, you know, I'd met um, Prince Andrew, Prince Philip at different times, all in my scarlet uniforms, and found it easy to talk to public. And I think it's important that people know and understand, you know, and the, the, the people we're trying to reach, that you don't have to be a platform medium. You can be a, a wonderful medium uh, just working from home, like you say, in trance or doing your private settings. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I find when I work um, in a one-to-one -one setting um, here in my home, uh, when, when at the time when clients were allowed to actually come and meet me face-to-face, -face, um, before pre-coronavirus, um, what I used to discover was sometimes that, that the mediumship for me would happen quite spontaneously. So they may have come to me for um counseling or life coaching or therapy of some description maybe even for their astrology and i just uh for me as i said it happens spontaneously i just suddenly know there is somebody on one side of them and i know that if it's on one side it's it's usually male if it's on the other side it's female and i often will just start describing what i see and, I, and I'm usually right. I think what it is that that way it's like I haven't been put on the spot. I'm yeah. not being asked, okay, so is my mother with you? Because that's when I go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it can, be a bit, it can be a bit daunting if it's not really what you want. And like, same as I said, there's lots of very good mediums who never... I want to say they never take that step, but they just don't want to take that step. Mm. So, now, I, I don't know if you have a family, but I've, there's some set questions. Do you have a family? And if so, how do you juggle the two lives? Okay, so uh, no, I, I don't have a family around me. Most of them are in spirit. I do have um, cousins in the UK because I live, as you mentioned earlier, in Malta, in Gozo, actually, which is small island of Malta and actually my cousin Stephen Hendon you will have remembered from Arthur Finlay because he was with me on that course we did yes. with you Libby and uh, I really must encourage him to get in touch with you and perhaps also volunteer to do a an on the couch with you yeah but my cats they are really interesting when I had um a, 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 another friend of mine a few years ago she does trance and she is a medium and she was helping me learn and discover my own ability to do trance work and several times she would say when we'd kind of finished the session she'd say look you weren't aware of it and you couldn't see it but uh the cat came in and was with you and was looking at you and looking at you as if there is something else with you. And, uh, you know, animals are incredibly sensitive. And interestingly, if I'm here with a client, which is not particularly for anything, you know, spiritually related, um, they just know to behave and they pick up the client's emotions. And it's often a really good kind of measuring tool for me because 
if they don't want to go near the client at all, it usually shows me that they are in a pretty dark place, that particular person. Yes. And when, as the cat, over the weeks of seeing the client, if the cats start to then start to show interest and get friendly, then I find that they are actually climbing out of the particular pit, perhaps, that they've fallen yes. into. So Kitty helps you in your counselling. <laughs> Kitty does. <laughs> so uh, when we first got in touch with you, you told me how you got in touch. You said, do you remember me from the Arthur Finley College? Yes, I do. And you said that you were doing live videos to help people during lockdown. So tell us a little bit about those. Okay, well, I think we've all probably discovered a lot more about ourselves since this lockdown started throughout the world. And I knew that if I didn't contribute something that I hoped or felt could be helpful, useful, beneficial to others, especially around the issues of anxiety, stress, confinement, boredom, fear, um, that I would, in a sense, be doing myself a great disservice and doing all the trainings I've had a great disservice. And also, I knew if I wasn't going to be doing something quite active, proactive, I was going to get pretty depressed myself and into states of anxiety. Yeah. And so I didn't really know exactly where to start. And then it just kind of came to me, oh, I know, I'll do a live video telling people how to cope with anxiety and fear and panic attacks. And having made the decision, it was like, I've committed myself. Oh, God, did I really mean that for myself, that I have to do a live video? Oh, my God, how scary is this? But I've to date, I think, done something like 24 or 25 over the last two months. Some probably better than others, some better received than others. You know, it's like a graph, isn't it? It's sort yeah. of, um, it, and I'm sure you found... Uh, that once you stick your head above the um, the parapet in social media, you're also up as a target for criticism as well. Yeah, and, definitely. You know, and at the beginning, because there were the sort of, you know, the people that just want to say something pretty unkind, um, that was quite hard. But once I did a bit of research on it and realised that that's just, part of the you know it just goes with the with the uh, the territory yeah. and you just have to kind of just rise above it it's not personally about you it's actually all about them that, that's so true somebody showed me something recently uh, that someone had posted you know on whose page i'm not following and i sometimes wonder have they got nothing better to do than pick on people who are just trying to help people it's like these videos it, it's not self-publicizing it's trying to get people more interested in mediumship and showing them that we've all got different journeys and yet i've been accused of self-gratification and self-publicizing and it, that was the last thing on my mind when i actually started doing this you know it's it's, it's just it's like you say it's the way of human nature sometimes that, that we have to pick and i found in this country particularly that we're very good at building people up but then we're very quick to smash them down if they start to succeed it's like we love the underdog to succeed but then when they do and they become the top dog we try to make them an underdog again i, I don't understand that yeah and you know that makes me think of, of the whole kind of bigger message of what's happened to say our planet at the moment because i think this virus situation has is at the moment having a good effect in the sense that i think it is making an awful lot of people think about what we've actually been doing to the planet and how we treat each other and i think it'll be sad if we don't learn the lessons that i think the planet is trying to give us with with this virus you know to just sort of have a think i think it's doing some good because this village I'm in, I haven't lived here all my life, but I was born here. Then I did my time in the army, left the army, lived in another town, lived on a boat recently for five years, and we've come back, and I've never seen a deer. 
but st- on this morning on the local town page, somebody spelled a deer just over there on the housing estate. Where's it come from? You know, and is it because there's less people about and there's less fear, so they're coming back? You know, we've seen hedgehogs it's, that have been quite scarce for about 15 years you know and we've even got one in the garden now that we're hoping the dogs don't find oh, no. <laughs> not that the hedgehog's bigger than them really only so many just now it's as well anyway yeah and i suppose i'm hoping that that people will start you know to go back to what you were saying about how people as soon as you're up there they want to pull you down can people just start being kind to each other and actually celebrating the success of others and because actually my sense is that when you help someone rise up, that helps you rise up too. Yeah. It's about empowering each other, not about criticising each other. Yeah. And it's and not it, about wanting what somebody else has got. You know, I talk and people have heard me say this several times in the years now. It's like mediumship. Have individual mediumistic experiences. Don't try and live somebody else's experience. And the same goes for life. We, we all live in a similar life, whether we're rich, poor, indifferent, you know, there's homeless, but we're all on the same journey, having a different experience, you know, and I think we should be mindful of that. Yeah, and so that's why I did these videos, because I really wanted to, I really wanted to give something back, and, and, and also I've offered, which interestingly, not many people have taken me up, and I offered free counselling for um, issues related with this whole situation and it's almost like people can't believe there's not a catch yeah. <laughs> that's quite yeah. sad isn't it because you know out of the goodness of my heart and just because actually you know we're all in this together let's let's try and help each other Definitely. so it's sad um that that there is so much as you said i think distrust yeah. and um basic envy and jealousy and competition definitely competition <laughs> yeah anyway we'll move on because uh, i know that you you've talked about your counseling you've talked about your mediumship it's all very interesting but i also know from the email that you sent me that you'd like to dabble with astrology so can you tell us a little bit about the astrology because what i'm trying to do is show people that i nearly said alternative therapies then but these alternative things that we can do you know, and perhaps in the past, like mediumship, it's like it's supposed to be the occult and the work of the devil and all the rest of it. But I find them fascinating. And astrology is another one that fascinates me. So I'd love to hear about that. Ah, well, um, it, it's not just a kind of a, an area that I, to use your words, dabble in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can actually say um, with pride now that I am a qualified astrologer. Wonderful. Uh, uh, I've actually been working with astrology for, wow, um, 35 years or more. Um, so but definitely only, not a dabbler then. <laughs> not a dabbler. But only in the last few years did I do something more constructive about it. And only in the last few months decided to actually start offering my astrological services online. Um, yeah. And one-to-one, if one is ever able to uh, meet up in person again. But actually, um, knowing that you might ask me this question, I did have a cheeky little look at your your Facebook page to see when you were born. Because I thought you might like to know um, uh, how uh, astrology can actually show you where mediumship would would be prevalent in someone's chart. Yes, I'm interested. <laughs> Just let me have a little look. <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, right, so, uh, and you also did give me your, your time of birth, which is great, because there are three really important parts of an astrological chart, and I will endeavour to keep this brief, because I do get terribly overexcited when <laughs> I talk about astrology. Um, But the ascendant of a chart is incredibly important, and that is the sign that is rising when we're born. And um, obviously the sun sign, where the sun is when you are born, is also very relevant. Uh, And most people only think about it, and we know from your sign you're you're, um, a Pisces. And 
But the, also the other sign of planet that is incredibly important in a chart is where the moon is. So I'm just going to tell you about your sun and moon and ascendant, which is cancer, uh, and why I am not at all surprised that you do mediumship. So interestingly, as we know, the sun is in, Pi in Pisces. Well, Pisces is ruled by the planet Neptune. Now, Neptune is about being able to kind of see through the veils, the veils that, that are kind of shifting. So it's a bit like being able to sense other dimensions. So Pisces is the 12th sign of the zodiac. Yes. So Pisces, um, therefore, is in a sense the most developed of all the signs on a spiritual level. So it's, it's no surprise that you have Pisces as your main you know, star sign. Also, your moon is in Aquarius. And Aquarius is um, about the ability to really, I think, see the bigger picture, um, to delve down, to kind of um, look within, to, uh, to be able to think in, in a very sort of broad expanse. And you have Neptune, the transiting Neptune in Libra, now, transiting Neptune in Libra, um, which I also have because it's a generational thing and we are actually born in the same year, but I'm not going to tell everyone what that is. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll think, or they might do, because they might think, goodness me, they look very good for their age, these two. <laughs> um, but, but Neptune in Libra, and Neptune, as I say, I think is about working with astrology, is very much about keeping the balance and being able to mediate so it's a little bit like being able to put information across in a way that can be acceptable and understood. And, and the other thing I want to mention before I finish is that uh, with Pluto, that is also a planet that I would associate with mediumship. You have that in Leo, um, as I do. And Pluto has been very significant in astrology at the moment because it's in Capricorn and um, with Saturn, but Pluto is about transformation. And I'm thinking about you and trance work. And I just think because Pluto in your, in your chart is in Leo, Leo um, likes to be seen. So I just think that's really interesting because it's like trance work, really one has to experience live. Yes. And, you know, so, um, that's what I want to say at the moment. But also just the cancer ascendant means you are actually quite a sensitive little soul. And <laughs> you probably put on quite a sort of, you know, tough exterior, exterior. You have to think of a crab. So they have this shell, this body armor, but inside they can be quite easily hurt. Yes, that's true. That's so um, there you go. Very quick little insight into your chart and why I think... It doesn't surprise me at all uh, that you are a medium. Thanks very much, Patty. <laughs> you are more than welcome. <laughs> well, sadly, we are coming to the end of the interview, but this is another one of those constant questions that I've asked uh, all my guests. And that is, if you, had, if you wanted to give someone advice, uh, you know, a new medium, a buddy medium, uh, or to follow a pathway to what would that advice be? Well, you have to trust your instincts. You have to trust that first thought. So what I've discovered from um, my exploration of mediumship is that if I don't trust my first thought, I'm wrong. And when I trust that first little message that comes in, that's the right one. And I learned that a lot also from you and Libby because... Um, you talked me through because I was saying, oh, I can't do this, Martin. I can't do this. And you said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And then you just kind of talked me through. And, you know, at the end, I was going, really? You mean I'm right? <laughs> <laughs> but before, before we go, I have to show you this picture because I know it's probably never been made public. <laughs> but you, when I had my one-to-one -one with you at Arthur Finlay, um, you were practicing, you might want to explain exactly what it was. Photographic mediumship. I, right. I'm trying to develop photographic medium, which is capturing spirit extras or spirit phenomena on photographic media, basically. 
Well, the photograph you took of me, and I know I think there were 30 on our course, and yeah. I believe you had two pictures out of that 30 that actually had a result, and I was one of them. Yes. And if I had any doubts before this picture was taken, they went once you sent me this picture. And I've since then had it printed up. And I know it's probably not going to come over very well on Zoom, but I will show it to the camera. But it is the most extraordinary experience. And I just know when I look at this picture, and I've shown it to people that knew my mother, that that is my mother in that picture. And she looks happy, and she's smiling, and she's just saying, I told you so. I told you I'm here. <laughs> and so here we go. And tell me to move it if the light's not good. You can see it there where you've got it now, yes. Yeah. Yes. So you can see it just overshadowed you. Yeah. And do you know, this is one of my most treasured possessions. And I want to thank you very much for that, Martin, because mm. this is just, I, I, I will never doubt. I will never doubt, and I don't doubt that when I have my time to go, she will be there waiting for me. Yes, yeah. Well, sadly, it has come to end. Ladies and gentlemen, another interview that I've really enjoyed doing with someone who, uh, I always say, uh, I don't just meet people at the Arthur Finley College. I meet friends at the Arthur Finley College, like my course organisers in this country and overseas. They become my friends and Penny certainly been my friends. So I hope you've enjoyed this time on the couch this morning with Penny Dix and myself. And I'd like to say again, thank you, Penny, for coming along. My pleasure. I tell you, that was, I was a little nervous, but you put me totally at my ease. And I've just thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. Really have. Thank you. Thank you. So, ladies, this has been Martin Kogler from The Couch. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now.